I don't think he was aware of, of what he looked like ever. He, uh, you know, he he would get a, get the hair out of his eyes and sometimes wipe the sweat away, but I don't think he ever, for one second, thought. I mean, really, the music was was the force um, that was that was coming through him. I don't think he really understood that. I think that he just was music. He was so much music that it was hard for him to be a human being in in a, a social setting. He was just so um, grounded in in music. I went to Sheffield uh, a few years after that with Graham Nash, and we, Joe had said, when you go to Sheffield, go and see my mom and dad. And so we phoned ahead and went over, and his mom and dad came out, and they had brought us a cup of tea, and we had some little bacon sandwiches, and she showed me around the house and showed me Joe's room, which was exactly the way it had been his whole life. And, you know, there was his little bed, and up over the bed were these shelves of singles, of Ray Charles, a lot of Ray Charles records. Everything was exactly the way it had always been. And to visibly see uh, where he came from, I could still see him in that room as an adult. That's where he still kind of fit in more than he fit on that big stage with the films and the and the, the crazy people and the, and the wild audiences. Because people on the road, the audiences were out of their minds. They'd never seen anything like this before and probably not again.